Thank you for joining us today for Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala, prophet, teacher, evangelist to over 64 nations, author, and senior pastor of Kingdom Connection Christian Center. And now let's join Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. And welcome to the radio ministry of Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. You can listen to Bishop Israel Ade Ajala on the following radio stations, 670 AM and 1220 AM. You can also listen online to the following websites, 670KLTT.com, 1220KLDC.com, and ctkradio.org. Also, you can connect with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala on YouTube at Ade Ajala Ministries and Facebook Live at Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. Subscribe to Bishop Israel Ade Ajala's podcast, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and receive Get Connected. Contact Bishop Israel Ade Ajala at info at kcconline.org or by phone at 720-859-1737. Now it's time for the Word of Faith with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. I want to welcome you to the year 2021. This year, God will do you good. Let me um, encourage you and celebrate with you the theme of this year for us in our church. The year 2021 is the year of the Lord's beauty. The year of the Lord's beauty. I want you to write it down. And I want you to write down the scripture for this year, which you must remind yourself and pray and meditate on it. This 2021 is the year of the Lord's beauty. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 17. It says, your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is very far off. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. I want to encourage you that this year, don't play with God. Because this year, you will see the Lord's beauty. And so today, as we enter the year 2021, I want to share with you some things that will make this year special for you. This year is not going to be like any other year. My God is going to bless you. My God is going to cause his face to shine upon you. It's your time to prosper. It's your time to go to the next level. It's your time to, to, to be celebrated. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not fail this year. God has a plan for you. I want to share with you today daily habits for all year round success. Daily habits for all year round success. Don't forget, this is the year of the Lord's beauty. You will see the beauty of the Lord, you will see the glory of God. You will see the power of God work on your life. The battle you fought last year, you will not fight it this year. This is a totally new year. You see, I want to thank God for the opportunity of new year. You know why? New year means you can begin again. It means you can let the old things be old and start a new thing. God that has brought you to this year is going to ensure that you finish this year. They will, not, they will not hang your obituary, your picture for obituary this year in the name of Jesus. God in his mercy will prosper you this year. 
He will bless you this year. I, I have very, very, I have some few keys. They are, they are not exhaustive. I, I just want to give you five, five keys to all year round success. Five keys, five habits that you must create. Before we go on, may I suggest to you that habits are formed or habit is formed through repetition for at least 21 days. Whatever you repeat daily for 21 days, non-stop. Now, if you do it 7 a.m., do it consistently 7 a.m. for 21 days. I, I promise you, after 21 days, habit has been formed. You will find yourself doing it without effort. Now, the danger of habit is this. Habit is formed through repetition, repetition for 21 days. Habit is broken if you stop doing it for seven days. If you stop doing it for seven days, habit is broken. Then you will have to start all over again. Nobody has to wake me up when to get up to pray. But when I first started, it was difficult. When I first started working with God, it was difficult. I, I, I do hit and miss. Today I pray, tomorrow, oh God. But when I was brought into the knowledge of habit is formed through repetition for 21 days. So I got myself a calendar and I would mark it. I did it today. Mark it. After 21 days, the 22nd day, nobody woke me up. I feel like doing it again. And it has been my habit every day. There are things I do every day. And if you do them, it does not mean you will not face challenge. But I can guarantee you, challenges will come, but you will overcome them. You will get over it. You will have joy in the midst of storm. And the storm that is drowning others will become your own testimony. What are those things that are very important? That you must not play with them. You do them regularly. Let me start now. Habit number one is prayer. Prayer. Start your day by spending the first few minutes in praying to God. Start your day praying to God. You know, a lot of people, they get out of bed without even talking to God until there is a problem in their day. Then they will say, God, where is your face? And God is saying, where has been your face? You see, when you want to start your, your daily routine this year, start your day. Start your day with prayer. Prayer is a dialogue with God. Prayer is a dialogue with God. It, 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 whereby you commune with the Almighty. You speak. It's always good to start your prayer with thanksgiving. Before you go to prayer, in, start, before you start asking, 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 first of all, thank him. You know, remember Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with, pray, with praise. When you start your day with prayer, you are declaring that you want God to lead you through the day. When you start your day with prayer, you are saying, God, Lead me through this day. I don't want to be the captain of my life today. You are declaring that the Lord is your shepherd. When you start your day with prayer, you are saying, God, you are the captain of my life. You are the captain of my soul. Hear this. There are certain doors that will not open for you until you pray. A lot of people will say, but God knows what I need. Yes, he knows what you need and he still say, pray. There are certain doors that will not open for you until you pray. It's not because God didn't want to open the door. It's just that God will not override your will. And also, don't forget that the enemy is always resisting <clears throat> any door that we want to open for you. Paul was writing, he says, there is an effectual, effective door that was open for us, but there are many adversaries. Is an effective door was open for us, but there are many adversaries. <clears throat> there, are, 
There are a lot of adversaries that doesn't want you to, 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 to speak to God. Pray daily. Pray daily. In Daniel chapter 10, from verses 12 to 14, the Bible says, The angel of the Lord said to Daniel, Don't fear. From the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were hard. And I have come before because of your word. But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision reverse to many days yet to come. <clears throat> Daniel was praying for understanding. He was praying to understand what is happening and what will happen to him and his people. And the very day he started praying, God released angel to go and you know, give him understanding. But the prince of the territory in which they were was holding him. Look, I am here in Denver metro area. There, is, there are principalities and powers over this city that we have to continually break them down, destroy them. You know, there are some people that will say, you know, well, Christ has died for us. Yes, but you still have to fight. You still have to destroy the enemy. You know, that's why I say resist the devil and he shall flee from you. You must pray. You must pray. Jesus told us in the importance of praying without stopping. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 11, he said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Now, he went on to say, you know, that if you ask, God will not give you what you didn't ask for. So you can read the rest because God wants to give good gifts to you every day. But you must ask. A man was blind and he was shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus came and then they brought him to Jesus. He was blind. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And the man said, that I may see. Why didn't Jesus just say, oh, yeah, yeah, he was blind. Definitely, no, I must just heal him. Jesus expect him to ask. You are expected to ask. Start your day with prayer. Number two, for you to have all year round success. The second thing you must do this year is feed on the word of God daily. Feed on the word daily. A lot of us, we don't read the Bible. We don't. Look at what we went through throughout last year. When somebody was just, who doesn't read the Bible? In fact, was leading pastors. A man who does not know the word was leading pastors. And pastors started seeing angels, calling angels from all that continent. You know, when you begin to read the word of God and you feed yourself with the word of God, all those errors, you won't be susceptible to it. Some now begin to depend on dream instead of the word of God. Oh, this dreamer is always right. Dream is just a product of sleep. It's not something that is so reliable. I'm not saying you dream God doesn't speak to us through dream, but it's not as reliable as you thought. You know, it, it's part of your emotion. Is the, is the product of sleep. The Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night so you can have good success. Another thing you must know is not only you must feed yourself with the word, you must confess the word. You must confess the word of God. Joshua chapter 1 says, Say it. Don't let it depart from your mouth. Confession brings possession. Confession brings possession. You must confess the word of God. You, if you want to enjoy daily satisfaction, you will have to be confessing the word of God daily. You will have to confess the word of God daily. You know, then, number four, you must have a daily plan of action. Daily plan of action. The plan of the diligent always lead to plenty. Don't live your life without plan. Live your life daily plan. 
weekly plan. What do you want to achieve today? What do you want to achieve this week? What do you want to achieve this month? What do you want to achieve this year? So that you can manage yourself in time. A lot of people want to manage time. I'm sorry. It's not easy to manage time. You know why? Time is fixed. 24 hours cannot be extended. You must learn how to manage yourself in time. Manage yourself in time. In fact, what we call time management is actually self-management. If you can manage yourself properly, you will make a good use of your time. I'll be right back after this. Thank you, Bishop, for that dynamic word, daily habits for all year round success to start the new year off in faith. Here are some important announcements before we return. Our services continue in person on Sundays at 8.30, 10 o'clock and 11.30 a.m. Our Wednesday and Friday services are at 7 p.m. Be our special guests. All services follow CDC guidelines. Our food bank is held every Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. For more information, please contact us at 720-859-1737. You can make a difference in the lives of many by giving to Get Connected with Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. Go to adeajala.org, that's A-D-E-A-J-A-L-A dot org, and click on Donate. All donations are tax deductible. Bishop, the amazing insight that you have ministered in the word today is one that gives us hope mm -hmm. in this new year that we are going into. Bishop, there are those, however, who have been devastated in the year 2020. And quote the great writer Langston Hughes in his poem Harlem that says, what happens to a dream deferred? and truly wonder if they can go on with so many of their dreams deferred in the past, in particular in the year 2020. 21. Year, the, the, the dream that was deferred in 2020, how can they go on with it? Yes. Now, uh, um, dream is like pregnancy. You go through phases. Dream is like a pregnancy. Not every pregnancy is brought to birth. Some are terminated while in the womb. How do you get, make sure that the pregnancy is brought to birth? Number one, you must first of all check yourself that you are in good health. Number two, you must eat well. Number three, you must not stress yourself, pace yourself. As the pregnancy grows, so the exercise you do differs. The same thing with vision. A lot of people don't know how to nurture their vision. And many people call daydreaming vision. The first thing that makes vision to become a reality is to write it down. The Bible says in Habakkuk, Chapter 2, write the vision, make it plain. Statistics have shown that 90% of vision that is never written down, never materialized. 90%, 9 out of 10 vision that people don't write down, they don't get it done. Everything we do at Kingdom Connection, I show my people around, we have written them down even before the ministry started. So we are not just scrambling. And a lot of people will just see what somebody else is doing, and they will start doing it. They call it their vision. Well, you can't give birth to a pregnancy you never carry. Somebody carry that pregnancy, nurture it, before you give birth to it. Dream your own dream. Now, if, you, if your dream is tarrying, the first thing I will always check is my motive. Why is it that if God give me this dream and I've not gotten there, then let me check my motive. Is my motive right? Because some of the things we call dream is ambition. There's nothing wrong with ambition. Now, two, you must be careful who you share your vision with. There are vision killers. 
people that will give you alternative that looks close to what is your dream. Oh, why should you? Listen to this. The Lord spoke to Terah when he was still in the awe of Chadins. And he said, take your son and your grandson, Lord, and all your family, leave this country and go to the land of Canaan. So the vision of Terah, when he left the awe of Chadins, was to go to Canaan. But the Bible says he got to Haran or Haran. And Haran was a beautiful country. And he settled in Haran. And Genesis chapter 11 finished with this terrible word. And Terah died in Haran. You see, his vision is to go to Canaan. But he stopped in Haran and died there. Why? Because distraction is another killer of vision. Or the momentary comfort. You become so comfortable that you no longer want to push yourself. Listen, keep pushing yourself. If it is the dream that you wrote down, why is writing down vision is important? Read it again. Read it again when the emotion is no longer there. If it doesn't make sense to you, it's probably not true. Sometimes it doesn't make sense in the real sense to other people, but to you, you are so convinced this is doable. Others may say it's not possible. You just know. Something is just telling you within you that it is doable. The other thing you need to do is to soak that vision with prayer. And that is how you nurture your vision. Just like a woman will eat, you must nurture your vision through prayer, the study of the word, the confessing, or confession of the word. You know, you must nurture it. Then you must find midwives, midwives, people that, that, that will work with you to birth the vision. You know, some are not midwives. They are, they, they, they are child killers. They will stifle that vision while it's still in your dream. Anybody that is asking you to pursue your vision in an unrighteous and ungodly way is a vision killer. Anyone that is telling you, don't, don't worry about what, anyone that feels that the end should justify the means of your vision is a vision killer. In God, when he's pursuing your vision, both the end and the means are equally important. Jesus could have jumped the cross and just pinched himself with a little blood and dropped the blood and he said, Father, I've shared the blood. But he went all the way. Because if he didn't get all the stripes, we would not be healed. By his stripes, we were healed. A lot of people, this is how you know whether you are being driven by ambition or vision. If you are able to stay and wait and be patient. Ambition says, let's go now, 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 now. Vision says, let me go at the pace of, the, of, 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 of my strength and the strength of the Lord and what is available. Somebody said that, Bishop, you are very calculative. I said, no, not calculative. I am a visionary, and I know when to pursue it, the right timing. You must know the time. You must know the time. When your time is right, you will know it. If it is not right, you will know it too. A lot of people will fight that struggle within them. They will, then they will turn it over and say, I'll go by faith. No, that's not faith. That's presumption. That's presumption. Then anchor your vision, the, the, the realization of your vision, on a promise that God gave you. When God gives you a vision, he will anchor that vision on a scripture. He will anchor the vision on a scripture. God will not just give you a vision without a word. In fact, it is from the word that the vision is birthed. From the word, I, when, you, when you get into the word, when I study the word, I study the word, and God will begin to show me how to pursue the vision he gave to me from his word, from his word. And sometimes people will say, where did you get that from? It's not new. It's in the word already. 
It's in the world already. When you do all these things, listen to me, your vision will not be delayed. Now, don't forget, there are circumstances, I mean, there are instances when God wants you to mature for the vision. Sometimes God will delay your vision because you yourself need to mature to be able to handle it. Imagine if when I first started ministry 35 years ago, uh, they just thrust me into a church of 50,000 people. I will kill all of them. I was not mature that much. I don't have the patience. I don't have the experience. So our church is growing today because God, first of all, matured the leader so that the people can be rest assured that they will not be led astray. When you do these things and you combine it with the last part of what I want to share with you today, which is you walk by faith and not by sight. You walk by faith and not by sight. Daily, there is no way your vision, I mean, you will not have an all-round success. Let me pray with you. Father, your people have had the keys to all-round success this year. As they put these things to use, let this year be the best year they've, they've, they've lived so far and make every day a greater day for them. I prophesy over your life, you will not die this year. The glory and the beauty of the Lord rest upon you. Till we meet next week, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Get Connected with Bishop Israel Adeyajala is a radio ministry of Kingdom Connection Christian Center, the wealthy place where champions are raised. Join Bishop Israel Adeyajala and the Kingdom Connection Christian Center Church family for services on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Fridays at 7 p.m., and Sundays. For more information, call 720-859-1737 or visit us at kccconline.org. Until next week, thank you for joining us.